In an age where the titans of tech and commerce are as recognizable as movie stars, a peculiar anomaly persists. Names like Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, and Bernard Arno are not just familiar, they're emblematic of the era, defining success, innovation, and wealth in the public imagination. Yet, amidst the luminaries whose fortunes and ventures captivate our collective attention, one figure remains curiously shadowed, despite his colossal impact and staggering wealth. Larry Ellison, the co-founder of Oracle Corporation, stands as the fourth richest individual in the world, yet he navigates a spire of relative anonymity. Unlike his contemporaries, whose lives and decisions make headlines daily and as recently as last week, were forced to apologize in front of Congress for their technology indiscretions, Ellison could likely stroll down a busy street unnoticed by the masses. This intriguing contrast begs the question, how has a billionaire of such magnitude managed to maintain a veil of obscurity in a society that obsesses over its wealthiest? In today's episode, we dive into the life of the world's fourth richest human being, exploring the paradox of his inconspicuous prominence and uncovering the reasons behind his lesser-known legacy, as we describe. Larry Ellison, the forgotten multi-billionaire. Larry Ellison, the co-founder of Oracle Corporation, is not just a tech titan, but also a master of amassing mind-boggling wealth. Specifically, as of 2024, he's lounging comfortably in the elite club with a staggering $135 billion, making him the world's fourth richest person. And this mammoth fortune is largely thanks to his 35% stake in Oracle, speaking to his visionary leadership since its inception in 1977. Indeed, Oracle's IPO in 1987 and the launch of the Oracle 7 database in 1992 were like hitting the jackpot for Ellison, growing his wealth and influence exponentially. And Ellison's flair for transforming options into piles of cash, notably pocketing $482 million from expiring options, showcases his financial acumen. Even as recently as the top of this year, his brainchild Oracle's market cap stands at an impressive 313 billion, placing it at the 27th position globally. But Ellison's investment portfolio goes well beyond Oracle. He holds a significant position as Tesla's second largest individual shareholder, with his 15 million shares constituting 12% of his fortune, and these shares have seen a staggering 1,004% increase in value over the last three years. Additionally, his early investment in NetSuite paid off handsomely when Oracle acquired it for $9.3 billion in 2016, boosting Ellison's wealth by $700 million US dollars. And when Ellison isn't investing in the world's most prolific companies or funding one himself, he's a real estate mogul with holdings that span the globe, including 98% ownership of Lanai, Hawaii's sixth largest island, a piece of paradise he acquired for $300 million. Undoubtedly, Lanai is more than just a land purchase. It's the crown jewel of Ellison's real estate empire. But his $1 billion real estate portfolio showcases a much broader penchant for luxury and strategic property development for good old Larry. In 2021, he made headlines with an $80 million purchase of a mansion in North Palm Beach and transformed his Rancho Mirage estate into Sensei Porcupine Creek, a luxurious wellness resort. Furthermore, Ellison's real estate ventures include a $145 million Palm Beach mansion, an exquisite property in Newport, Rhode Island, including the historic Beechwood Mansion, and a collection of opulent homes in Malibu, California. In addition to his real estate and tech ventures, Ellison is a connoisseur of luxury yachts and exotic cars. His recent acquisition of a 60-meter sailing yacht from the Italian Sea Group is an icon of his lavish lifestyle, and his larger fleet of yachts includes the Katana, the Ronin, and the Rising Sun, an 82-room floating palace designed for Ellison in 2005. The Musashi, an 88-meter Japanese-style vessel, further adds to his impressive collection, but Ellison's passion for exotic cars is perhaps even more noteworthy. His garage houses and Audi R8, a McLaren F1, and a Lexus LS 600h, each symbolizing speed, luxury, and sophistication. His love for high-end vehicles extends to the skies with his private aviation fleet, including a Gulfstream G650, a symbol of luxury in the private jet market. 
and this aircraft, with a list price of around $75 million when new, is capable of near supersonic speeds and exemplifies Ellison's penchant for the finer things in life. But Ellison's skybound interests aren't limited to just owning the planes. He wants to hold the entire airline in his grasp. Larry Ellison has taken his love for high-altitude adventures to new heights by snagging Island Air, an airline zipping through the Hawaiian skies, hot on the heels of his Lanai Island buyout. This savvy move isn't just Ellison flexing his aviation enthusiast muscles, it's a subtle upgrading of his personal fleet for island hopping in style. Ellison isn't one to lounge in the shadows when it comes to philanthropy either. His political wallet opens wide for Republican pursuits, firmly planting him as a heavyweight in the donation ring. With a cool $30 million dropped into a pro Tim Scott Super PAC's lap in 2022, and a jaw-dropping $15 million in January of that year alone, he's not just talking the talk. But it's not all politics and power plays. Ellison's heart is as big as his bank account when it comes to health and education. A front-runner in the Giving Pledge Marathon, he's vowed to fork over the lion's share of his fortune to causes that matter. And his eye-popping $200 million donation in 2016 to the Lawrence J. Ellison Institute for Transformative Medicine at USC is making waves in cancer research, mixing up the medicine pot with a cocktail of traditional and alternative remedies. In fact, Ellison's philanthropic journey didn't hit pause even as 2020 threw a curveball with COVID-19. It just added another layer to his mission. However, while tech billionaire icons like Musk, Arnold and Zuckerberg are household names the world over, how did the world's fourth richest person manage to fly, no pun intended, given his love for aviation, under the radar so easily? In order to find that out, we'll head back a few decades into the heart of the city that never sleeps, the Big Apple, New York City. In the hustle of mid-20th century New York City, Lawrence Joseph Ellison's journey began under challenging circumstances. Born to Florence Spellman, a 19-year-old single mother, and an Italian-American pilot father he never knew, Ellison's early life took a dramatic turn when he contracted pneumonia at nine months old. Unable to care for him, Florence sent him to Chicago, entrusting his upbringing to her aunt and uncle, Lillian and Louis Ellison, in a modest South Side apartment. The revelation that he was adopted at age 12 marked a significant moment in Ellison's life, exacerbating a tense relationship with his adoptive father, Louis, who doubted his potential. Despite these familial challenges, Ellison's proclivity for math and science shone brightly, laying the groundwork for his future endeavors. And Ellison's academic journey began with promise at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign, where his talents earned him the accolade of Science Student of the Year. However, the death of his adoptive mother, Lillian, during his second year, derailed his academic pursuits, prompting him to withdraw and later enroll briefly at the University of Chicago. It was here that Ellison's encounter with computer design ignited a passion that would redefine his career trajectory. Yet his tenure at the University of Chicago was brief, and Ellison left academia without a degree, but not before realizing the lucrative potential of computer programming. But Ellison's departure from formal education did not deter his ambitions, and he moved to California, diving headfirst into the burgeoning tech scene. It was here, amidst coding jobs and emerging digital trends, that he honed his programming skills and began to shape a vision that would alter the landscape of data management forever. You see, the catalyst for Ellison's groundbreaking vision was a paper by Edgar F. Codd on relational database management systems. To put it simply, Codd's paper proposed a way for databases to be structured in such a manner that data could be accessed and related to each other in a flexible yet structured way. This concept would prove to be revolutionary because it promised to make data retrieval more intuitive and efficient, a stark contrast to the rigid and complicated systems that were in place before. Thus, Ellison saw the potential for this new database system not only to revolutionize how data was managed, but also to create a lucrative business by offering a product that could vastly improve data accessibility and analysis for businesses and organizations. Then, in 1977, and with this vision in mind, Ellison co-founded Oracle Corporation with colleagues Bob Miner and Ed Oates. Specifically, they were inspired to create a database system 
that would leverage the principles laid out by COD to revolutionize data management. And Ellison's leadership and commitment to excellence and innovation steered Oracle through its early days, setting the stage for its remarkable growth. Now, one of Oracle's strategic decisions that showcased Ellison's determination was ensuring that its software was compatible with IBM's System R, despite IBM's reluctance to share its error codes. In other words, Ellison made sure Oracle's database could communicate with IBM's, even though IBM tried to keep the specifics of its system a secret. This compatibility was crucial because IBM was a dominant force in computing, and being able to work with IBM systems opened up a vast market for Oracle. Subsequently, in 1979, Oracle introduced its very own relational database management system, which was revolutionary because it allowed for the efficient storage and retrieval of data in a way that was more user-friendly and adaptable than existing systems. Indeed, this innovation was not just a technical triumph, it marked Oracle's emergence as a major player in the technology world, setting the foundation for its future success. Now, throughout the 1980s, Oracle faced stiff competition from other companies eager to capitalize on the growing demand for database management systems. And this period was fraught with challenges as newcomers to the DBMS market sought to carve out their own share. As the murmurings of Oracle possibly going public, thus leaving Ellison with the possibility of adding billions, not just millions, to his net worth, time would tell if success or failure would be his fate. Oracle Corporation's journey from its initial public offering on the 12th of March 1986 to becoming a titan in the technology industry is an icon of strategic innovation and aggressive expansion. Indeed, the company's IPO, which saw 2.1 million shares sold at $15 each, marked the beginning of Oracle's ascent in the tech world. And with an annual revenue of $55 million at the time, the IPO's success closing the first trading day at $20 per share, laid the groundwork for Oracle's future growth. You see, this growth was not just numerical, it was transformative. By the end of the 20th century, Oracle had executed 10 stock splits between 1987 and 2000, a move that kept its shares accessible to small investors and reflected the company's skyrocketing value. In layman's terms, an initial $1,000 investment in Oracle at its IPO would equate to 21,000 shares today, showcasing an astronomical return on investment thanks to the company's enduring success and stock price, which now hovers around 120 US dollars. And Oracle's corporate culture and leadership under Larry Ellison played a crucial role in shaping the company's direction. Ellison's management style, known for being intellectually intimidating and aggressively competitive, fostered a culture of innovation and internal competition. And despite criticisms, this approach was instrumental in driving Oracle's rapid technological advancements, including its foray into cloud computing. As the millennium turned, Oracle adeptly navigated the Y2K problem, affirming its leadership in database software. And the company's successful pivot to cloud computing was underscored by the launch of eBusiness Suite Release 11i in 2000, marking the beginning of an aggressive global expansion and acquisition strategy that targeted enterprise applications market leaders. And in the 2000s, Oracle's strategic acquisitions, including notable companies like PeopleSoft, Siebel Systems, and Hyperion, further expanded its footprint in the enterprise applications market. These moves, coupled with strategic collaborations like the partnership with Microsoft Azure for a multi-cloud approach, underscored Oracle's adaptability and foresight in a rapidly evolving tech ecosystem. Soon, Larry Ellison's leadership not only propelled Oracle's technological and financial success, but also established him as a significant figure in the tech industry and beyond. With a net worth estimated at $28 billion even in the year 2010, Ellison's lifestyle and philanthropic efforts, including his commitment to the Giving Pledge, reflected the broader impact of his success. However, in the following decade, he would face his hardest competition yet, as the behemoth that seemed to swallow every company, Amazon.com, would jump into the cloud computing business. In 2015, Oracle Corporation, a beacon in the enterprise software arena, embarked on a decisive shift towards cloud services, 
a move that underscored its strategic realignment in response to the evolving IT landscape. This transition wasn't merely about augmenting its offerings, but about creating a seamless, comprehensive platform that bridged on-premises solutions with cloud-based applications. But the cloud computing sphere was fiercely competitive, with giants such as Amazon Web Services, or AWS, Microsoft, and Google setting the pace through aggressive expansion and innovation. However, Oracle carved its niche by providing an exhaustive suite of enterprise software services alongside platform and infrastructure solutions, a distinction it claimed as unique in the cloud domain. Thus, by 2018, just three short years later, Larry Ellison, Oracle's co-founder, had not only solidified his influence within the tech industry, but also diversified his interests into various startups and technological ventures. Notably, his significant investment in Tesla and his board membership underscored his strategic forays outside traditional tech boundaries. Ellison also ventured into health and wellness with Sensei, a company he co-founded, focusing on hydroponic farms and innovative health technologies. This initiative reflected his broader interest in leveraging technology for wellness and nutrition, and the technological advancements of 2018 brought forth significant innovations across sectors, with companies like IBM and startups such as OneWorm and Rocket Lab leading breakthroughs in AI, quantum computing, and space exploration. These days in 2024, Larry Ellison, as Oracle Corporation's chief technology officer and visionary co-founder, has once again positioned himself at the forefront of technological innovation. This time, his focus is sharply on the transformative potential of generative AI, a domain he heralds as the most significant technological advancement to date. During Oracle Cloud World in Las Vegas, Ellison's proclamation about generative AI's capability to revolutionize Oracle's application development process underscored his interest in pioneering a future where software development is more reliable, secure, and innovative. But Ellison's ambitions with generative AI are not confined to the realms of software development alone. He envisions leveraging this technology to address some of the most pressing global challenges, including healthcare, security, and agriculture. Through initiatives like Oracle's Clinical Voice Digital Assistant and the Cloud Data Intelligence Platform, Ellison aims to catalyze innovation across various sectors, promising a new era of efficiency and problem-solving capabilities. Moreover, the anticipated widespread adoption of enterprise-oriented large language models, or LLMs, as they're more commonly known, in 2024 points to a future where productivity and efficiency gains are matched by considerations around energy consumption and cybersecurity vulnerabilities. This duality captures the essence of innovation in the digital age, where advancements are often accompanied by new sets of considerations and ethical dilemmas. Parallel to the technological landscape's evolution, the personal life of Larry Ellison unfolds with equal parts success and complexity, and his journey through four marriages and the upbringing of two children offers a glimpse into the man behind the corporate legend. Ellison's many marriages began with Ada Quinn, his wife from 1967 to 1974, followed by a brief union with Nancy Wheeler Jenkins in 1977. His third marriage, to Barbara Booth from 1983 to 1986, blessed him with two children, David and Megan Ellison, both of whom have carved their own significant paths in the entertainment industry. David Ellison, as the founder of Skydance Media, has been instrumental in producing major Hollywood franchises, including Mission Impossible and Star Trek. And Megan Ellison took a different yet equally impactful route by founding Annapurna Pictures, known for its critically acclaimed productions like Zero Dark Thirty and American Hustle. However, despite his children's achievements, Ellison has made clear his intention not to bequeath his vast fortune solely to them instead earmarking the majority for charitable endeavors. Ellison's fourth and final marriage to novelist Melanie Craft from December 2003 until their divorce in 2010 adds another chapter to his storied personal life. Therefore, through the highs and lows, Ellison's personal experiences, much like his professional pursuits, reflect a relentless drive to re-evaluate, innovate, and push forward. And now, we'd love to see you in the comments. Which tech billionaire and their families would you like us to feature next on this channel? 
We've done Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, and now Larry Ellison. We'd like to hear your thoughts. And thanks again for joining us for another episode of Old Money Luxury. Cheers, until next time.